Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our weekly update. I'm pleased, as always, to be joined by Dr. Lawrence Lowe, the Chief Medical Officer of Health for Peel, and Tim Beckett, Fire Chief and Director of Emergency Management. COVID cases in Peel as a whole have been on the rise, and are rem but are remaining relatively stable in Mississauga. With an average of 201 new COVID cases per day in Peel, and 54 in Mississauga over the last week. These are the highest numbers we have seen in this region since the onset of the pandemic in March. Dr. Lowe told me he believes that this upswing is a result of small and large social gatherings over the Thanksgiving long weekend. What this means for Peel is that we are now officially in the second wave. We know from the evidence that most of the transmission is happening when people gather indoors with those outside their immediate households. We are responsible for moving this virus. Our personal choices and our behaviours are what's driving the numbers. And only we can stop it. So please, I'm urging you, reduce your in-person contact. Do your best to keep it to those in your immediate family, your immediate household, and your essential supports. We are truly at a critical moment here, and we need to be vigilant. We have a chance right here and right now to stop the second wave from overwhelming our community and overburdening our hospitals. Our collective goal has to be avoiding large gatherings, uh, to prevent a longer lockdown for our struggling businesses, to keep our schools open, and of course, to protect our long-term care homes. Reducing the risk of spread of the virus will also mean doing things differently this Halloween. I know that many parents and children are disappointed that they're being asked to forego door-to-door trick-or-treating. Halloween is one of those exciting times of the year for all the kids right across Mississauga, right across Ontario and in Canada. So again, I encourage parents to find creative ways to keep festivities exciting but safe for their children. In my experience, if there's candy, the kids are happy. The city is sharing ideas on social media about how you can celebrate Halloween safely. So please, have a look at the city's Facebook and Twitter page for ideas. At the end of the day, it's up to parents to make decisions in the best interests of the health and the safety of their children. To all the adults out there, this means no Halloween house parties for you too. So no costume parties this year, please. It's just not worth it. We don't want to see another surge like we did during Thanksgiving or following Thanksgiving. If 311 receives complaints about large gatherings, our enforcement teams will be responding. I'm really hoping that by celebrating Halloween differently, we can once again join to celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. I now want to address our city's small business community, and in particular, our restaurants, bars, and gym owners. I have heard from many of you over the past few days and, and weeks, and I know that you're incredibly anxious about your future. I know that you're frustrated and I know that you're hurting. But I want you to know that we are in your corner. Your mayor, your council, and your city is behind you. We're doing everything in our power to advocate on your behalf. I understand that while restaurants, bars, and gyms are not the source of spread here in Mississauga, our provincial partners and the chief medical officers of health have made the case, their case clear earlier this month to close these establishments to prevent the further spread of COVID-19. And this is a global best practice to do so. We must continue to respect the direction of our public health officials. We need to get our numbers down if we're going to help our businesses reopen and re-enter phase three over the next few weeks. It's that simple. And that's why I'm asking the community to step up and support our small businesses by doing their part to help reduce the spread 
and keep case counts down. I'm hopeful that by working together, we can make this happen and we can get our businesses reopened. We recognize that we are in the midst of a second wave here in Peel and that health, the health and the safety of our residents must continue to be our top priority. At the same time, we remain positive and find ways to ensure that local businesses not only survive, but thrive in this very difficult time. COVID-19 is unfortunately part of our new reality and will be so for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, our economic health is inextricably tied to the health uh, of our city and of our people. While public health must always be our top priority, we must work to strike the right balance to ensure that our economy continues to move forward and that our residents can make ends meet. To that end, the Peel Region Mayors are working on a letter that will be sent to Dr. Lowe asking him to prepare plans for three possible scenarios as we approach the minimum 28-day period for the modified Stage 2 restrictions that were outlined by the province. We want to be ready and prepared to respond to the second wave as it uh, evolves and as circumstances change. Ultimately, it will be up to our public health officials to recommend next steps, depending on our pandemic picture here in Peel. The three scenarios are as follows. First, status quo. If case rates remain stable, we need a path forward for local businesses. Many are uncertain of what the future holds and have told me they can't survive repeated closures. Secondly, a return to stage three. Should case numbers improve here in Mississauga, we want to ensure that businesses impacted by stage two restrictions are ready and prepared to reopen. Peel mayors are seeking Dr. Lowe's advice on what modifications would need to be made to help businesses safely reopen, such as reducing capacity in bars, early closings in restaurants and gyms, or requiring plexiglass partitions between dining room tables, etc. And thirdly, additional closures. Should case counts increase and further closures be recommended, we ask that those decisions be driven by local data that speak to our unique circumstances here in Mississauga, here in Peel, local data. As I discussed with the other GTHA mayors and chairs earlier this week, we urgently need a safe path forward for all of our small businesses. We need to ensure that they're fully supported to weather this storm. We're also doing what we can to advocate to higher orders of government for the immediate financial relief that our businesses need, not only to survive, but to thrive. Today, along with Tony Frankfurter, our Chair of Tourism in Mississauga, I sent a letter to the Prime Minister and the Premier urging both to provide additional supports and immediately release the promised funds to help small businesses here in Mississauga. As a city, we are doing everything in our power, but we simply don't have the resources or the fiscal firepower that other levels of government have to provide a direct injection of financial support to our business community. Among the many asks, I have requested that if further closures are to be explored, that they be based on local data. I've requested that the province review outdoor patio regulations to ensure expanded yet safe outdoor dining is possible this winter. At the city, we're looking to extend our temporary patio program year round at our next council meeting in early November. I've asked the province to help local manufacturers step up production of items that are currently in short supply, such as patio heaters and tents, so that our businesses can comfortably accommodate customers outside. I've heard from many restaurant and bar owners who are struggling to get their hands on this type of equipment. I've asked the province to put a cap on delivery commission fees for food delivery apps for the duration of the shutdown to provide relief to restaurants offering takeout only. I have urged both the province and the federal government to make it easier for small businesses to access the financial supports that they need to survive. 
And this includes immediately releasing the $300 million in funding announced by the province for businesses impacted by the Stage 2 restrictions that will help them offset fixed costs such as property taxes, hydro and natural gas bills. I've asked the federal government to help streamline and simplify the application processes for their relief programs, including the new Canadian Emergency Rent Subsidy and the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy. Businesses need help now in order to make it to 2021. Supports need to be immediately accessible to businesses in all types of situations to avoid permanent closures. I've asked the federal government to ensure small business owners and entrepreneurs are also eligible for programs like the Canada Recovery Benefits as well as employment insurance. I know that many are struggling to keep on top of their household expenses like mortgages and rent payments. They too have families and homes and personal bills to pay. I am fighting for you and I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that your concerns are heard at all levels of government. I'm asking that all Mississaugans also to play their part by supporting our small businesses. Please think Mississauga made when making your purchases this week. Visit that local coffee shop in your neighborhood. Support Takeout Tuesdays. Pop into that children's clothing store that you always wanted to check out, or that in small independent grocery store around the corner. And on that note, I'm happy to report that our city has extended our partnership with R Ritual One. This means that Mississauga businesses can access their digital ordering platform free of charge until the end of the year. And until November 8th, Ritual One will be waiving all delivery charges for online purchases for businesses and customers. Businesses, please take advantage of, of this free service. And residents, please make the effort to order delivery at least once a week. It may seem like a small gesture, but this can be the difference between a small business staying open or having to shut their doors. Mississauga, we have a chance right now to stop this virus in its tracks. Please, please do everything you can to limit your contact with those outside your household. Do it for your family. Do it for yourself. Do it for that teacher at your local elementary school. For that personal support worker at that long-term care home. For that small business owner struggling to survive. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Lowe to come up and provide us with his weekly update. Dr. Lowe. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good afternoon. As of noon today, Peel Public Health has investigated 5,139 cases of COVID-19 in the city of Mississauga, 381 active, 4,524 recovered, and 234 deceased. This past weekend, the region of Peel saw rapid growth in our new daily cases beyond known chains of transmission, confirming the arrival of a second wave in our community. Some might wonder why I am announcing this sometime after Ottawa and Toronto. Well, we're a different community. Your efforts, the suburban form of our community, and Peel Public Health's efforts in contact tracing helped to delay this situation that also means, however, that we face unique challenges in bringing this back under control. Our initial findings suggest that spread from social gatherings around Thanksgiving pushed us into the second wave. This means that modified stage two restrictions started at just the right moment in the golden window to help reduce contacts and interactions, but it clearly isn't everything. We must do more ourselves. And I know that all the rules and restrictions can be confusing and dizzying. So I urge you to remember two simple things. Restrict close contact with your household, your immediate household, and essential supports only. No one else. For any other interaction that you must have beyond your household, assume that anyone else outside your immediate household could be carrying the virus 
and take precautions accordingly. Simply put, we must limit our in-person contact and stop meeting in person as much as possible. COVID-19 is spread from person to person, so it cannot spread if people do not meet. This means cancel, postpone, or move online where you can, especially for optional gatherings or a meetup. Socialize online, have a virtual happy hour or coffee chat, phone your friends. Meeting in person, unfortunately, can give a false sense of security and lead you to draw closer. You'd never think you could get COVID-19 from your best friend or your family, but the truth is, that's what we're seeing happen. We're more likely to let things slide with them because we trust them more. Which means that if we limit our in-person contact, if we truly care, especially for those who are more vulnerable, we can try to keep each other safe. That's also why, as we come up to the end of the 28-day pause, we must move cautiously in thinking around restaurants and gyms and bars. I know it hasn't been easy for our business community, and I deeply appreciate the sacrifices that were made to bring this under control. But we also know that this is the world's largest open book test, and that in other jurisdictions, at levels of viral transmission that we have, we have seen spread in these settings. So as restrictions are being reviewed, and certainly will come forward from our provincial partners, we know that there will be calculated risks that may need to be taken if changes are made. I'm also calling on places of worship in our community. While recognizing that modified stage two restrictions are silent on your venues, I am urging as much as possible that you consider returning to virtual or online gatherings. Thank you to the employers who are also doing everything possible to keep your employees safe. But for those who aren't, I'm calling on you to put in place precautions to protect your workers or face enforcement action. And for everyone at work, please remember that a break from work is not a break from the precautions. You must continue to follow precautions at lunch, during breaks, or while carpooling. Finally, remember that self-isolation means self-isolation, away from others. We continue to pursue a facility to help individuals who cannot safely isolate at home. But if you have test positive, spend 10 days on your own. And that includes your household contacts. You must keep them safe. That also means that if you have returned to Canada, returned to Peel from outside of Canada, follow federal guidance around mandatory self-isolation and adhere to the required quarantine on return. It all boils down to one thing. We must stop coming together. If we do not meet, the disease cannot spread. For this weekend, that also includes Halloween. And so I ask that you celebrate, but do so differently. Please don't trick or treat. Please don't attend Halloween parties. We don't want a Halloween surge to add to the Thanksgiving surge that we've just observed. We know what we need to do to stop COVID-19 from spreading. We've done it before and we've pushed the virus back and I know we can again together. Next week, in receiving the letter that is being drafted by our mayors, I will share my recommendations on the way forward as November 6th draws closer. Thank you and I'll pass it back to Madam Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. And now he and I are available to take the questions from the media. Mayor Crombie, your first question comes from Ashley Newport from Insaga. Ashley, please go ahead. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Mayor Crombie. Hi. So uh, earlier today at Council, um, it seemed everyone had a really good discussion and there was a lot of frustration about how, you know, Mississauga's numbers have been high, but not, not as high as Brampton's and, you know, Halton's right next door. So, you know, more people from Mississauga are just Halton to, you know, eat and drink there or work out there. I know that, you know, the Halton mayors wrote, uh, Halton leaders, not just mayors, but MPPs and, and leaders wrote a letter over the weekend saying they didn't feel that going into a uh, modified stage two was appropriate for them. And I know that um, the day before Peel went into a modified stage two, you actually said, um, at one of these press conferences that um, bars and restaurants were not a driver of, of cases and 
urging the province not to not close them. That obviously uh, didn't happen. Why do you think the province has been more responsive to Halton's call um, for their businesses to be kept open, whereas you, know, you didn't receive that same response from them? So, so thank you very much for that question. It is a very important question. I'm going to take a shot at it, and then I'm going to ask Dr. Lowe as well. So first of all, we have been deemed, because we are one public health unit, Mississauga, Brampton, and Peel, uh, to be a hot spot, along with Toronto and Ottawa. Halton, for the most part. Durham were not, and then I guess they looked at York a little bit differently as well. And while I said that our restaurants, our bars, our lounges, our pubs, and our gyms were not the source of the spread, the reality is there was concern that there would be spillover uh, from the city of Toronto. People would come into Mississauga, much the way you are describing Mississaugans are going into Halton region. However, that said, Dr. Lowe and I have had many of these conversations. Closing our restaurants and the gyms is a universal or global best practice because we know that the risk of transmission can be greater in a restaurant where four people, six people can be sitting across from each other, remove their masks and sit for a period of an hour or more. It is one thing to wear a mask, to walk the aisle of your grocery store and pass someone along the way. It is quite different to be interacting with five other people um, at a restaurant or in a gym at the uh, um, at the treadmill next to you. So perhaps I'll ask Dr. Lowe as well. So being deemed a hotspot, uh, implementing best practices that are known globally, and Mississauga being part of a health unit where there uh, was a lot of concern about growth of uh, numbers. I will share that our numbers are starting to stabilize. I've seen a reduction Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'm, I'm very, very hopeful if this pattern in Mississauga Mississauga continues, uh, and hopefully in all of Peel, but certainly if the pattern continues in Mississauga, we can find a safe way to reopen those businesses uh, with the caveat of perhaps other restrictions, whether there be capacity limits or early closings, whatever they might be, I want to get our businesses back open. I'll let uh, Dr. Lowe respond as well. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ashley, for the question. You know, I think the reality is we need to look uh, at the numbers. And as I understand it, uh, there will be a, a broader provincial modeling update that is shared tomorrow. Uh, I would encourage everyone uh, to uh, to look at the numbers uh, and uh, and understand uh, the very uh, heterogeneous picture that we're having across the province. Uh, as I stated in my remarks at the beginning, uh, we do know, for example, Ottawa and Toronto saw the second wave surge in their communities uh, before uh, we here in Peel had seen just uh, what we've seen over the last seven days. Um, and the reality is that at the time, though, in September, uh, we in Peel, even though we weren't seeing the second wave yet, as I'd always said, one wrong move could push us into it, uh, we were seeing high rates of transmission in known clusters, some of the highest rates of transmission in the province. And so for that reason, I think, uh, you know, the province uh, made its decisions and, uh, and brought into place um, control measures uh, that were targeted at the three communities and certainly were consistently targeted across the three communities, but that incorporated some of the restrictions uh, that we had requested for in the region of Peel and some of the restrictions that have been requested uh, in other communities. Um, the reality of it, I would say, is that we know what we need to do, which is we need to reduce in-person contacts. And every country in the world, every jurisdiction in the world that is taking this seriously has known that there is some sort of measure that needs to be put in place. So I would say, uh, in preparing for November 6th, what we need to take a close look at is if there is a, a push and a desire to release restrictions on one side, then we need to figure out how we're going to make sure we keep contacts or interactions down on some other side. Global experience shows, for example, uh, limitations in terms of pro geographic proximity. Quebec has roadblocks between different regions. Uh, we have seen other jurisdictions uh, close other uh, facilities and other economic sectors uh, besides there. What we don't want to see in, in essence, though, and recognizing the disproportionate burden uh, that some of these restrictions have had on some of our community, is we don't want to get to the point where, we, where they are in Western Europe, where pretty much most of the European Union is shutting down due to a second surge. And that really speaks to the challenge before us. We can either close and make sure that we take the safe precautions to keep our population safe and our hospitals and healthcare system capacity preserved, or the virus will do it for us. And so that is 
the challenge and the, and the, uh, the important thread that we need to work our way through at this point in time. Thank you for the question. Ashley, before you leave, I just wanted to add that this past weekend uh, there was a little surge and when, while the Premier was looking at to whether or not to close down Halton Region, uh, their numbers were somewhere between 20 and 30 cases as a region and ours were almost 300. So you can see the quantum difference that, uh, that represented the case numbers at the time of, the, of considering whether to close down Halton or not. Right, no, that makes sense. And uh, just my uh, my quick follow up then is uh, you know uh, Dr. Lowen has said that um, the surge from uh, that we're seeing recently appears to be related to to Thanksgiving. I was actually wondering if you know off the top of your head how many um, tickets or fines that uh, bylaw officers might have given out over the Thanksgiving long weekend. Um, I don't have those numbers, but we did hear anecdotally some super about some super spreader parties. I know of uh, a Quebec family that passed on the virus in uh, Peel region and also, oh, wait a minute, I think I do have them. Uh, and then also in Vaughan, there was a party that uh, resulted in uh, the Thanksgiving dinner that resulted in uh, two dozen case numbers. Okay, I have it in front of me, Ashley, and it looks like... Um, The number of tickets was uh, four, and they related to uh, stage uh, two and a half opening. So I can only imagine that there was some violation with respect to a restaurant or lounge and outdoor dining. Dr. Lowe, did you want to make a comment on any of that? No, I think we're good. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. If you, you know what, if you, if you want further clarification, we can certainly send that information over to your office, Ashley. I have it here, but uh, you know, I'd have to read the fine print. To, uh, I just know that this says four fines and tickets, uh, and it was related to businesses. They were issued to businesses um, and related to perhaps they had not moved into stage two and a half from stage three is what I would expect. Oh, fully enclosed exterior spaces, fully enclosed exterior spaces. So Ashley, that is a challenge that we have been seeing that uh, four sides of the tents that we're seeing pop up across the city may not be shut. We, two sides must remain open so that number one, there is airflow, which is the criteria for outdoor dining, not indoor dining outside. Um, and then of course there are safety measures in place. Of course we can't have propane heaters outside, they must be electric heaters. So I think along those lines is what we, what we had been seeing well, or by law enforcement had been seeing it they definitely pertain to um, pertain to fully enclosed exterior space mayor Crabbe, your next question comes from steve from the mississauga news steve please go ahead and unmute your line hi mayor Crabbe, how are you I'm, I'm very well how about you steve i'm good thanks uh just echoing um Rather, just uh, noting uh, what Ashley said as well about the frustration that council uh, today uh, around kind of Mississauga and res uh, Mississauga restaurants and businesses being restricted, while uh, you know not uh, while having less cases um, than other parts of Peel um, in Mississauga. So you said uh, something the effect of being interested in a school style approach uh, yes. for restaurants during the meetings mm -hmm. for staff members or patrons. Uh, uh, would be removed or if there were cases or, or individual businesses might be closed if there were an outbreak. But Correct. The question is, are you are you confident in that kind of school style scenario that, that um, customers from other parts of Peel uh, and the GTA where the pandemic may be worse wouldn't just flock to Mississauga restaurants? Well, that's not the experience um, of Halton. Certainly, uh, we've heard Mayor Burton over the weekend say that uh, Oakville welcomes people from all regions at all times, as does Burlington, um, and their case numbers have not been shifting dramatically. Um, and we do know uh, that Mississaugans will travel to Oakville, need be. I, I, I think I gave the example this morning, Steve, that on Dundas and Winston Churchill, the north side of the road is Mississauga, and our restaurants are very sadly shut for indoor dining, only open on the patios, but across the street is Oakville. So many of the patrons that would have visited a Mississauga rest restaurant have ventured across the street to the south side of the same street, uh, which is Oakville, and um, gone to those restaurants instead. So there is that crossover, and it hasn't affected their cases, and I'm very hopeful that, you know, I, our restaurants, our bars, pubs, our, our gyms, let's include those two, have been very responsible, very responsible. 
possible. So, uh, you know, I'm very hopeful that if the rest of the community will help us get these numbers un under control in within this 28-day period or shortly thereafter, we can reopen. Thanks, Mr. Crombie. I have a question for Dr. Lowe certainly, as well. Certainly, certainly. Hi, Steve. Thanks. Go ahead with your question. Dr. Lowe, uh, you flagged previously that um, Peel Region is a you know, deeply connected area and it could be problematic to allow you know, some areas of Peel to be open while others are closed. So at this point, based on the numbers you're seeing, uh, would it be risky or dangerous to open up some Mississauga businesses while you know, the same type of businesses would remain closed in Brampton or, or uh, Toronto? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the reality is uh, I, I'm serving, uh, obviously, all the residents who live within the region of Peel as well as within these three different municipalities. Uh, we do recognize uh, that there is, uh, there are different pictures uh, within the region, but to be honest, uh, they're not uh, all that different. When you actually look at them from an overall basis, uh, we're still seeing higher rates of transmission uh, in all three municipalities uh, as compared to most of the province. Um, certainly if you think about uh, the north, the east, southwestern health units, uh, some, of the, some of the rates that we're seeing uh, in our communities are still uh, certainly uh, cause for concern. That said, uh, you know, we are hoping, at least over the next week, uh, that the combination of the Thanksgiving surge, hopefully mitigated by uh, the measures that were brought in place uh, with the modified stage two to reduce contact interactions, may help to bring things somewhat under a form of control. Uh, and that will, uh, you know, stand as well as uh, I, you know, as I continue to prepare my recommendations with my team uh, and our conversations with our provincial partner in approaching the, uh, the November 6th uh, review for the 28-day pause. So, um, you know, it's, it's certainly one that we're, uh, you know, aware of within the region, but I think you also have to look at it relative to other jurisdictions, even within Ontario. Thank you, Steve. Dr. Lowe, why don't you stay up there? Your next question actually comes from Isaac Callip from the Pointer. It's for Dr. Lowe. Isaac, please go ahead. Perfect. Thanks. Go ahead, Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Uh, both my questions are for you, so I'm going to keep you at the podium for the follow-up as well, if that's okay. Sure. Um, my first question is about schools, and I've been looking through the school cases um, in Peel, and we're at a point where more than 100 schools have active cases. It's averaging roughly one in four schools in the room who have at least one active case at the moment. Obviously, with the cases going up in the community as well and then being reflected in schools, are we in danger of approaching a point where you would have to recommend shutting down various schools or possibly even the entire school system in Peel? No, not at all. No, not even... Okay. Um, my follow-up, that's nice and simple, my follow-up is um, on events and on Diwali. So I'd like to kind of put two things into it at once. The first is, what would your advice be for Diwali? And the second is, when it comes to, like, I think we mark things by these events. So we've had this conversation around Thanksgiving, we're now having it about Halloween, I'm already asking about the next event. Without the vaccine on the table, is it responsible for us to keep going through things in these short-term windows? You know, Mayor Crombie mentioned we could be celebrating Christmas together if we get things under control. Does it make, is there an argument for looking ahead over six months and saying we won't be celebrating any of these events together in person? I think that would be premature, uh, Isaac, because I think we recognize that the incubation period for this virus is two weeks. Uh, and so typically what you're seeing in terms of the decisions that are being made are in two to four week increments. Uh, that said, I want to make very clear that I don't think I've ever said anything about Christmas. I think I've made it very clear uh, at this point in time that we need to focus on the now. We need to focus on getting this under control. Um, and I would, I would also argue, uh, you know, the advice for Diwali and Thanksgiving, uh, you know, they come up because they're topical to the time. So certainly ahead of Easter, we were speaking to Easter, uh, you know, to Idolada, you know, we were speaking to that. And that's really the function of understanding your population and the uh, messaging uh, that the local community uh, wants and needs to hear. Uh, it really helps to uh, centralize the message about celebrating with your immediate household, celebrating with uh, you know, your, own, your immediate household and essential supports and limiting uh, contact beyond that uh, in your celebrations and looking for virtual options uh, if you're able to tie it to something that has an emotional value and an understanding. Uh, just really trying to make sure our community understands just how vital and critical this is and that really all of us are very much in this together. Thank you for the question.
Isaac, it's Mayor Crombie. That message about Christmas was to give inspiration and hope. <laughs> if everyone did what we should, what we need to, maybe we'll have enjoy Christmas and Hanukkah dinner together. Mayor Crombie, your last question comes from Khaled from My Second Home TV. Khaled, please unmute yourself and ask your questions. Welcome, Khaled. Khaled, you need to unmute yourself. I'm, just, I'm muting is. myself, but there was a glitch. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you, Khaled. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, a couple of days ago, you announced uh, the return of TSS, the Digital Service uh, Squad. And I need to ask a little bit about whether there is any um, coordination between the DSS and the ritual. Um, anyhow, because, you know, uh, lots of the small businesses um, they lack a little bit the uh, know-how when it comes right, to right. dealing with technology. And uh, there are lots of other funded programs mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. help link uh, people from different areas to the intended programs. Is there any... Um, something like that so you know you ask a very valid question we assisted all of our uh, or many of our small businesses in our community get them online get them digitized we've been encouraging them to use ritual one but we need the assistance of both our mississauga board of trade to get the message out to their members our economic development office here we're planning uh, a few more webinars uh, to, with our small businesses by sector to get the the, the message across what is available what are the resources available available to them. They've done, I think, hundreds of one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, small businesses, but many more can be done. So certainly on our website, all those resources are available, as well as all the government programs and subsidies uh, and funds that are available to small businesses. But it's, it's, it is difficult to get the word out to everyone. You are quite right. So we're relying on our partners, uh, our Tourism Mississauga, our Mississauga Board of Trade, uh, uh, and our Economic Development Office. Uh, to get the word out. Thank you. If I may touch again about the uh, outdoor patches for the uh, restaurants, uh, if you are extending the permits, uh, are you, uh, let's say, uh, waiving any fees? Yes, correct. So um, the program uh, was designed to make it if very easy, simplified, so that patios could open uh, in public spaces, in the parking lots behind their stores, or in the laybys, etc. Um, so we didn't require any permit fees, we didn't require applications, and we are extending the program. Right now, it's ex been extended to November 15th, um, and early in November, there will be a report brought to Council uh, requesting that, that uh, the program be extended through the new year. Thank you so much, Mayor. My pleasure. Madam Mayor, that's all the questions for today. This concludes today's press conference. On behalf of the Mayor and Dr. Lowe, I want to thank everyone for participating. Have a great day and stay well.